Thank you. If I can ask those members leaving the chamber to please do so quietly. We now move to urgent questions, and I call Graham Simpson. Thank you very much. To ask the Scottish Government what action it is taking to restore ferry services between Malaig, Oban and Loch Boysdale in South Uist, in light of the announcement that the services are to be withdrawn from the 5th of April to the 13th of May. Minister Kevin Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Transport Scotland uh, met with CalMac earlier today uh, and they confirmed they are doing everything possible to bring vessels back into service and minimise the period that the Loch Boysdale Oban Mallee route is out of service. CalMac have also put in place mitigation by increasing services on the Barra to Eriske route to allow greater use of the services from Barra. Uh, we recognise the real challenges being faced and regret the disruption that this is causing to island communities and, of course, island businesses. It is, however, important to note that islands remain open for business and CalMac are highlighting where there is capacity on secondary routes. As members are aware, we have provided funding for the charter of the MV Alfred that will enable additional resilience in the fleet when she comes into service next month. Graeme Simpson. Can I thank the Minister for his answer and can I uh, start by welcoming him to his new post? Um, he's only minutes into the role but he's not off to a good start. His answer will be of no comfort to islanders who will be without a ferry service to the mainland for five weeks. And Presiding officer, presiding officer, it's hard for those of us who live on the mainland to understand the impact of that because most of us have choices of how we get about, no matter how bad public transport is. Now, CalMac Chief Executive Robbie, Dr Robbie Drummond calls it a challenging period which could go on for two years. It's worse than challenging, it's disastrous. So with the holiday period looming, what will the Minister be doing on his break to sort this out? Minister. Well, um, uh, I thank Mr Simpson for welcoming me to this new post. And uh, Mr Simpson and I have uh, been uh, opposing in various roles in this parliament previously. Uh, and as Mr Simpson well knows, uh, I will always do my level best. Uh, and what will I be doing over the next week while? Well, today I met with Transport Scotland directors to discuss some of the most important issues uh, facing transport in Scotland. Uh, this afternoon, uh, I will be speaking with CalMac about this and other issues. I recognise how important these ferry services are for our island communities. They are lifelines. Uh, as chair of Nestrans, in a previous life, I served on the Northern Isles. Lifeline Ferry Service Committee. So I recognise the impacts uh, that these kind of things have on our island communities. And I will be doing all that I can to ensure that CalMac get it right for all of our island communities uh, and the Chamber can be assured uh, that I will continue to update everyone on how we are going about that. Graeme Simpson. Well, I'm not sure any of that will be a comfort to islanders, uh, but to be fair to the, the minister, he has inherited a disaster. Mm -hmm. Now, islands and particularly businesses, islanders and businesses on the US need help. So has the government done any analysis of the impact on the local community and the economy of this? And can the minister commit to looking at a compensation scheme for islanders and reduced fares on those ferries that they can actually use while this crisis goes on. Minister. Uh, President officer, as I said in my earlier answer, um, my first uh, course of action is to speak to CalMac this afternoon and to hear what mitigations can be put in place. Uh, and while um, the announcement by CalMac uh, of uh, this change has come as a shock to many, 
um, including the government. We have to ensure that communication is right between CalMac and our island communities too. Uh, I will be um, uh, speaking to CalMac this afternoon. We will be seeking mit mitigations. I will be seeking solutions uh, so that our island communities uh, can get back to the normality that they should have in these regards. And of course, as always, President Officer, in all of this, I will continue to update Parliament on our efforts to achieve that for our island communities. Alistair Allen. I welcome the Minister uh, to his new post. Uh, I have today been inundated with messages of despair from South Uist. This is a community that has suffered by far, by far, the highest rate of cancellations of any island community uh, over a period of months. And for this to happen yet again, just as the Easter holidays are starting, is a devastating blow. Given what I have to frankly call the abysmal state at present of CalMac's service to this particular community, can the Scottish Government consider, consider either a business resilience fund or other specific measures for use? Minister. Um, President Officer, um, I fully sympathise uh, uh, the impact that this is having on South Uist. Um, I recognise that uh, Dr Allen has been uh, vociferous uh, in all of this. Uh, the impact on his constituents um, will uh, no doubt uh, be challenging for some, and uh, the timing of this withdrawal uh, is not uh, uh, the best either, given the Easter period. Scottish ministers need assurance from CalMac that this measure has been taken with full consideration to capacity and volumes on alternative routes. It is, however, important to note uh, that CalMac have increased uh, operations on the service from Eriskay to Barra, and there are other routes to enable people to reach South Uist, so that people know the island remains open for business, although uh, car deck capacity may be pressured. As I said earlier, I will be meeting with CalMac later this afternoon, and I will impress upon them the need to minimise any outage to this service. On the point of the compensation scheme, I know that this is something that has been discussed by the Loch Boysdale Business Group with ministers and officials, and I will need to consider this further, although our primary focus has to be on restoring these services to minimise impact on business in the first place. And as always, uh, I am more than willing uh, to discuss these matters uh, with Dr Allen further uh, as the constituency MSP. Rhoda Grant. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I also welcome the Minister to his new post. It is absolutely unacceptable that there will be no ferries from Loch Boysdale for six weeks. Uist has already borne the brunt of recent disruptions. The mitigation put in place means that the small isles will also be left with only one ferry a week, again absolutely unacceptable. Disruption is now so common that the Scottish Government have devised a disruption management traffic pri prioritisation framework. The framework can cancel bookings and relegates hauliers to the end of the queue, making their businesses and those depending on them absolutely unviable. Can I ask if you will procure a, ferry to, a freight ferry to bring into service for those periods? What assistance and compensation will he make to all of those impacted? Or is he just another in a long line of failed transport ministers? Minister. Um, well, it must be a record uh, in terms of uh, already um, a, a member basically uh, saying that uh, a transport minister for, has failed, uh, considering that I have not been, I have not been in post for uh, 12 hours, even uh, yeah, or 10 minutes in reality. Um, what I would say to Ms. Grant. Quite simply, as this, she is confused in some of her lines of questioning uh, because the mitigation committee that she talks of Thank has got members. nothing to do with the Scottish Government and is CalMac. 
I intend to have discussions this afternoon with CalMAC around about the measures that need to be put in place here. I will talk to them about the issues that are affecting islanders. And I will do everything that I can to ensure that CalMAC does the job that they need to do. And in terms of future procurement of ferries, as I said, we have already bought, brought in the MV Alfred. But I will be looking at all of this in some depth as I know that my predecessor, Jenny Gulruth, did, to find solutions that work for our island communities and ensures that we have a ferry service uh, that works for all. Edward Mountain. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I hope I'm going to be some help to the Minister. In 2018, the Scottish Government set up a resilience fund of £3.5 million to hold fast-moving spares for ferries that broke down so they didn't have to be manufactured. The problem was that the Transport Minister at the time, Graham Day, repurposed it for something else. The following year, Michael Matheson, who was the Transport Minister at the time, repurposed it for another reason, but said that it was being reinstated. So, can the Minister confirm that that money has been spent on holding spares, those spares are in stock and available to use for the ferries? And if he doesn't know the answers, I suggest it might be where he starts with CalMAC this afternoon. Sorry. Minister. Uh, well, I'm sure that that will be part of many discussions with uh, CalMAC this afternoon. Um, but as my predecessor uh, has said, there is that resilience fund that they hold. Uh, I will be questioning about them, uh, them about that this afternoon. Um, and I have to say that I will be questioning them around about the current unavailable uh, ferries, which are MV Caledonian Isles, Clansmen and Hebridean Isles, to make sure uh, that we can get these ferries back into service as soon as possible. Jamie Halker johnston Thank you. I heard that the Minister say that he was meeting with CalMAC and that he was meeting with Transport Scotland. When is he meeting with the communities impacted by this? Because they're sick and tired of hearing new Transport Ministers making promises that are never, ever delivered. Minister? Oh, what, I, what I would say to um, the member um, is, uh, I think it's 12 minutes now that, uh, since my appointment. <laughs> Um, I have already met with Transport Scotland this morning. I will be meeting with CalMAC this afternoon. Of course, I will be meeting with communities the length and breadth of Scotland about the transport issues that they face. I think that many members will recognise that in all of the ministerial roles that I have had, I have gone out of my way to listen to the voices of lived experience. Uh, because that is extremely important to me in ensuring that our policy de decisions are the right one. This job is no different, and, and I will speak to our island communities um, as well as everybody else that our transport system impacts upon. Thank you. Move to the next question, and I call Willie Rennie. Can I welcome the Cabinet Secretary to her, her new post um, to ask the Scottish Government what its response is to reports that Police Scotland call handlers used a fake system for eight years. Minister Angela Constance. Poseidon officer, and I'm grateful to Mr Rennie for uh, laying this question. While this is a matter for Police Scotland, any suggestion that callers to Police Scotland were not having their calls properly prioritised is clearly unacceptable. I have assurances from Police Scotland that this historical practice was limited to a single regional force that is no longer in use anywhere in Scotland and hasn't been since 2015. Police Scotland call handling has been completely overhauled since the creation of a single national service and policing continues to be a priority for this government. Willie Rennie. The Scottish Police Federation warned about the dumping of SCO6 calls at the time. So the government should have known about this. Back in 2015, I also raised the alarm repeatedly about the failings of the newly centralised Police Scotland. These systematic failings led to the tragic deaths of Lamara Bell and John Yule. But we were not told call handlers used a fake system with a fictitious call sign. It was used to hide the chaos, and anxious members of the public had their calls ignored. The call sign was dummy. So can I ask, did ministers or government officials know about call sign dummy? 
Minister. President officer, can I say very directly to Mr Rennie that I am not aware of any information that suggests ministers were advised of this at the time. In terms of the issue at hand here, uh, my officials and police division have discussed this issue, as you would expect, uh, directly uh, with the relevant Police Scotland division. And Police Scotland have stated that while the call sign existed, that it was used when calls were at a peak so they could be put into a holding system until they could be dealt with. Police Scotland do not believe that any calls were dropped to its use. That said, they are clear it is not an acceptable approach uh, at this time. And with regards to the uh, very tragic, painful, awful loss of life on the M9 that Mr Rennie uh, refers to, can I also say directly to him that Police Scotland have given my officials categorical assurances that this historical issue is not related to the tragic death uh, of uh, Mr Yule and Miss Well. There is obviously a fatal accident inquiry with regards to that matter about to commence soon, and I can't at this stage add any further comment on that. Willie Rennie. I'm afraid this is the culture that has been established by this government. Spin and manipulate to avoid the truth coming out. This also lays bare the abject failure of governance. This should have been spotted by the Scottish Police Authority. So will the Minister now commit to wholesale reform of the governance arrangements for the police service? Minister. Presiding officer, I am... Um know and appreciate that when it comes to the creation of a single national police force that Mr Rennie and I uh, sit on different sides of the fence in this one. But I also hope in terms of the contact that he has had me over a range of portfolios uh, over uh, a number of years, neither me nor Mr Rennie are new uh, to this place, that he would accept and appreciate uh, that I am very strong and focused on governance and uh, accountability. I would also say that Police Scotland must be one of the most scrutinised public services in Scotland, eh, and eh, rightly so. And I would eh, point to the fact that on the eh, issues in and around call handling, eh, there have been several reports um, over the past recent years, uh, carried forth by Her Majesty's Inspector of Constabulary for Scotland, uh, several reports dating from 2015 with very clear uh, recommendations uh, that have been uh, implemented with the most recent report uh, in 2022. And I look forward to continuing to engage with Mr Rennie on this and many other matters. Audrey Nicholl. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I too would like to welcome the Cabinet Secretary to her new role. I recognise the call handling system in question is a legacy service that was permanently deleted in 2015. However, as the new Cabinet Secretary has just alluded to, this will be of little comfort to those who have been personally affected by these revelations. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, as she takes on her new post, what steps the Scottish Government will take going forward to ensure transparency, maintain public confidence and build increased public trust in policing? Minister. Presiding officer, I uh, thank Ms Nicholl for her comments and of course look forward to future appearances uh, at our Parliament's Criminal Justice Committee and to being held to account. Um, can I say to Orji Nicholl, uh, start by reiterating something that I say to Mr Rennie, that Police Scotland is one of the most scrutinised public services in Scotland, and that is entirely right. Um, I will continue to work with the Scottish Police Authority, uh, His Majesty's Inspector of Constabulary in Scotland, uh, the Police Investigations and Review Commissioner, as well as national and local parliaments 
and of course uh, this Parliament to support uh, and challenge Police Scotland to ensure that we maintain an excellent standard of policing uh, for all our communities. And along with the investment of nearly £1.5 billion in policing uh, in 2023 to 2024, this coming financial year, uh, I do expect to introduce the Police Complaints and Misconduct Handling Bill to Parliament later this year. Jamie Green. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I welcome the Cabinet Secretary to her new position? The problem is two of her Justice predecessors hold two of the highest offices of government still, and many questions yet remain unanswered about this. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary said that call handling has improved, but the reality is last year hundreds of thousands of calls to Police Scotland went unanswered or were dropped by the caller. Can I ask around this revelation, and it is a scandal, I should add, has anyone gone back in time to review which of these calls that went into the ether? What happened to those calls? What was the exact consequence of not dealing with those calls? And more importantly, can we get categorical reassurance today from the new Cabinet Secretary that this practice did indeed end in 2015 and has not happened once in the time since then until now? There remains serious questions unanswered. Someone must pay the price for the scandal, Cabinet Secretary. Minister. Presiding officer, I do indeed um, appreciate why Mr Green and other members have raised this matter today. It is, of course, uh, a serious matter. Can I uh, refer him, without repeating in full the, the earlier comments I made to other members uh, about the, the explanation uh, that has been given um, to the, 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 the situation here? Uh, and it's that, that this call sign existed and that it was used when calls were at a peak so that they could be put into a holding system until they could be dealt with uh, and that Police Scotland uh, say that they are clear uh, that calls were not dropped uh, due to this. Uh, but of course, as you would expect, uh, I am due to be meeting with the Chief Constable uh, shortly and this will be one of many matters uh, that will be on the agenda. And I would also, again, uh, for, for, for brevity, President Officer, refer to the, the several reports that have already been carried out uh, on this matter. Um, including uh, the earlier reports that made a number of recommendations that covered issues of staff and systems uh, and processes. Uh, and the, the follow-up report, in particular the 2018 report, um, that uh, recognised the considerable priority and effort uh, that had been made in this area, as well as the progress. Thank you. Pauline McNeill. I too would like to congratulate Angela Constance on her appointment to Cabinet Secretary for Justice. I ask if the Cabinet Secretary agrees that it is a very serious matter because the call centre system was designed to redirect actual one-on-one -on -one calls to make the response times look better. And the BBC reported today that some of those calls did go unattended as a result of that. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree? She says she's not aware that, that, that any other practices in other parts of the force existed. But does she agree that Police Scotland should never allow pressures to meet certain responses and targets ever lead to any types of practices like this ever again? And will she ensure then that since the Chief Constable who is, who is leaving the service has pleaded with the government to fund the service to ensure that 101, a vital public service, continues to be the best service it can be, can she assure the Chamber today that she will ensure that the 101 service Service will operate effectively and be adequately funded. Minister. Sign officer, um, I think I have re reiterated to, to members throughout this discourse this afternoon that uh, I consider this a serious matter, um, albeit uh, one of historical practice, but nonetheless uh, it is imperative that we continue to, to govern, uh, to scrutinise, to hold ourselves and each other to account, because it is absolutely imperative uh, that there is the strongest possible confidence uh, in our police force uh, and all uh, related uh, practices. Um, in terms of uh, 
uh, funding. I have already intimated that uh, going forward we will invest nearly £1.5 billion um, in policing uh, in terms of uh, the resource increase. That is an increase of 6.3 per cent um, and an additional um, £80 million. Um, and as Ms McNeill uh, will appreciate, I will be scrutinising that budget um, with, with great care and detail um, as we move forward. And Russell Finlay. Thank you, and I also welcome the Cabinet Secretary to her new role. Uh, a senior police officer has told the BBC that he was instructed by Police Scotland to investigate this matter. He produced a report, but no one knows where that report is. Will the new Cabinet Secretary, when she does meet the Chief Constable, instruct or request a fresh search for this crucial document? Minister. Design officer, I again, uh, as always, appreciate Mr Finlay's uh, deep interest in our criminal justice system uh, on this and our, a range of matters. Uh, I will indeed be meeting with the, the Chief Constable uh, very, very shortly. Um, I would, of course, say that um, in terms of uh, the briefing I have received from my officials uh, and the extensive questions that I have already put to, to them, that there has been uh, five reports on issues in and around call handling um, thus far. And I would Therefore, you know, urge members to, to go back, to look at those reports, to look at the recommendations that were made and to uh, look at the progress that has been made. But of course, um, my, my door is always open to any other supplementary uh, information um, that uh, needs to be drawn to my attention. Thank you. That concludes the urgent questions. The next item of business is consideration of Parliamentary Bureau Motion 8474 on suspension and variation of standing orders. And I ask George Adam on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau to move the motion. Thank you, President Officer, and moved. Thank you, Minister. The question on this motion will be put at decision time, and I am minded to accept a motion without notice under Rule 11.2.4 of standing orders that decision time be brought forward to now, and I invite the Minister to move the motion. I was always happy to oblige, President Officer. Thank you. The question is that decision time be brought forward to now. Are we all agreed? We are, and there is one question to be put as a result of today's business, and the question is that motion 8474, in the name of George Adam, on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, on suspension and variation of standing orders, be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are. The motion is therefore agreed, and that concludes decision time, and I close this meeting. <laughs>